Hey there, Whew. hey there YouTube, CJ back at you with another video, and this one is kind of by request. People have been asking, what is ohms? What's resistance mean? Uh, how does that, you know, what's that got to do with vaping? So today we're going to get into it. You ready? Let's go. So, um, ohms, resistance, what's it all mean? How does it affect your vape? Well, <clears throat> the easiest way I can kind of explain ohms is that it's a measurement of the resistance of electrical, you know, of electric going through a wire. So if you thought of it like a hose, like how much water could flow through it, similar kind of thing here, how much electricity can flow through a certain distance. So, you know, if we're using like, say, Canthal, it's the most popular uh, wire type. So let's say that's one ohm per foot. Nichrome is a typically a lower resistance wire, so that might be a half ohm uh, per foot. Now again, let me let me just state that these are not actual numbers; these are just for illustration purposes only. Um, but so that's why we might have different wires, you know, stainless steel, nichrome, canthal, nickel, titanium, and you know, nickel, titanium are temperature only. Um, but the other wires, you know. If, you, if you've only got a certain space to build, like in an RTA, an RDA or something, you need a lower resistance, you might tend to go to with like stainless or a nichrome because it's automatically going to have a lower resistance. Um, you know, a lot of this doesn't take part in like with the sub-ohm tanks where, let me uh, open up my, 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 big, my big box of uh, goodies, one of many that I have. Uh, this one's got a lot of sub-ohm coils and parts and O-rings and whatnots in them, but... So like, you know, like this here, uh, this is Aspire 0.27 ohm coil. Of course, you can't adjust the resistance of that, but Aspire makes a 0.2, a 0.27, a 0.4. And then they also have a stainless one that you can use in temp control mode, um, which is also a 0.4, I believe. Um, but, you know, you can choose a different resistance and put it in there. Now, why might you choose like a 0.4 or a 0.2? Well, typically, a 0.4, you'll have to apply less power to it um, to... Uh, you know, you know, up, you know, get the, uh, get it, uh, working. Um, and the lower resistance coils, you typically have to apply a little bit more power to them to get them going. Um, again, generalization. So, uh, I typically, you know, I run between like a 0.3 and a 0.7 ohm and I'm normally anywhere from like 30 to 60 ish Watts. That's kind of like my wheelhouse. So, um, in, you know, for sub ohm tanks, that's kind of where I'm at. Even when I'm building, you know, when I'm wrapping my own coils, um, I, I, that, those are you know, similar areas that I shoot for. So when you're wrapping a, a coil itself, if you're, you know, into rebuilding an RTA, an RDA, an RDTA, all the plethora of different ways of, you know, building your own coils and wicking it and everything, uh, typically the more wraps you make, the more resistance you're going to have because you're using more wire. And the bigger the, the um, inside diameter, the ID, so the bigger the hole in the middle, the more resistance, because obviously you have to use a little bit more wire to make each wrap. Um, also, the legs of the coil, so these two long parts that stick off, they're called the legs. How long they are will also affect the overall resistance of the coil. Um, so, you know, and obviously the wire type. So if I'm using Canthal, if, you know, if, you, if, I, if I built the same exact coil, same wrap, same diameter, same legs, with canthal, nichrome, and stainless, they're all going to come out to different resistances because the wire itself also plays a role in how much resistance there is uh, to the electricity passing through it. So um, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. So uh, that's kind of the gist of what ohms is. It's basically just the measurement of resistance, you know, that the coil is going to, you know, resist the electrical flow going through it. Um, you know, like I said, typically the higher resistances, you know, need less power. So like in a mouth to lung where you're 1 ohm or 1.1 1 .1 ohm, you know, you see those guys, you know, they're, they're, you know, vaping at 10 watts and it's plenty. Um, whereas, you know, you know, like with a, uh, you know, with a parallel mod like this, you know, I've got a 0.13 ohm build on it. So super, super low. Um, uh, and it's, you know, producing, you know, 100 over probably over 100 watts or so or something like that. So. You know, typically that's the way it works. Um, you know, not necessarily, you know, there's not, uh, you know, an exact right or wrong number. I mean, you could take a 0.15 ohm coil, vape it at 100 watts and like it, but you might take the same coil and vape it at 50 watts and like it. There is no right or wrong at what wattage you're vaping at. Um, 
but uh, oh, thank you notification. Um, but uh, you know, just know that typically with the higher resistances, you'll need less power, and with the lower resistances, you'll need more power. Um, and obviously, the more power you need, the more battery life, you know, the shorter your battery life is going to be, and that type of thing. So. Uh, anyway, I hope this helps clear up some confusion or question about what ohms and resistance is. And uh, on that note, have a little toot. Uh, you all keep your vape game strong, and I'll see you in the next one.